In this video, I'll be installing this 200 watt solar panel and new 20 amp MPPT charge controller from NewPala. This 20 something year old Chevy van has been our camping slash hauling slash utility vehicle for the last couple of years. Since it needs to play double duty as work vehicle and recreational vehicle, we didn't go all out with a crazy camper conversion like I did with my old Chevy van. Instead, it got a simple auxiliary battery system consisting of a deep cycle lead acid battery and a split charge relay and some charging outlets. This setup worked okay for the last year or so, however, when it came time for camping and recreation one flaw would frequently pop up. After charging phones and camera gear and running our 12 volt fridge, at some point usually after about 30 to 35 hours of being parked in the same spot, the auxiliary battery would become too exhausted and the fridge would shut off meaning we would have to start the engine and let the van run for sometimes up to an hour just to get the battery charged back up to the point where it could function through the next night. One solution would have been to simply add a larger battery or a second battery to the system for more capacity, but the longer term, more useful solution that I was looking for was solar power. So I was grateful when New Power agreed to send out a panel and charge controller that they thought would suit my needs. Installing these in the van should result in a more capable, passive charging source for not only my auxiliary battery, but also my van's starting battery. So let's get to work. In order to get this panel installed up on the roof, I'm going to build a roof rack. Got the measurements I need, now let's head to the steel shop and uh, get the supplies. To save me the time and hassle, I had the steel shop cut the pieces to the exact size that I needed. Now comes the tedious job of uh, weld prepping. The benefit of using this kind of boxed in style of roof rack that I'm making is that it will protect the panel from low hanging tree branches that might otherwise put some abuse on the frame of the panel if I were to just mount it straight to the roof. I've made some feet for the roof rack. Now I'm gonna prep these, weld them on the frame, and uh, one step closer. At this point, we have our gutter mounts made, found some bolts. Eventually, I'm going to replace these with some security bolts, so it's not so easy to just pop that rack off and steal it. So we're going to do a little test fit and see how sturdy it is. With the rack built and painted, I can turn my attention to how I want to route the wires for the panel and where I'm going to mount the charge controller. So my plan here is to actually try and get in behind this plastic cover and go down along the side of the tailgate and through a grommet down here in the corner of the van. That way I don't have to drill any holes and uh, hopefully it should make this installation just that much easier. Sometimes wiring can really make your head hurt when it comes to translating diagrams to real world wiring, especially when you start getting involved in full on wiring harnesses. But in this case, it's almost as easy as it could possibly be, which I'm grateful for. So here's what we're working with. We have a solar panel, charge controller, and our auxiliary battery. First, we'll be hooking up the auxiliary battery to the charge controller. And this is according to the steps in the user manual. We're gonna take our positive from our battery, connect it into the charge controller with a 20 amp circuit breaker in between. The manual calls for a 20 amp fuse. I'm using a circuit breaker because I like being able to reset it and also disconnect it if I need to. The negative or black wire is simply gonna to connect to the negative terminal on the charge controller. For connecting the panel to the charge controller, it's basically a mirror image. The manual doesn't actually call for another circuit breaker or fuse on this line, but I like to add one in just in case I need to disconnect the power for some reason. So we're gonna put a couple more screws in here, then finally fasten everything down. But this is pretty much installed. There's one little piece I need to plug in here. This is the temperature sensor. 
this is just so the solar controller can know what the ambient temperature is and uh, make little adjustments, I guess, in order to protect the battery. Just go ahead and plug this in now. So that's this end sorted out. Now all that's really left to do is just run the wires over to the battery, connect them. Which is mounted in a factory GM battery tray that bolts to the frame rail. Make sure when you do this, you wear some safety glasses, particularly if you had just recently been driving your vehicle on some dirty, muddy roads. You will definitely be dropping junk and gunk down into your face while you're climbing around underneath. Now with the wires ran and the circuit breakers disconnected, Let's take a look at the manual and see what it says about the order in which we need to connect all the components. It says first step is to connect the battery. So we're going to crawl underneath, connect the circuit breaker, and that will connect the battery to the charge controller. Before moving on, I'm going to download the app that works with the charge controller so I can set the charge profile to my battery. On here, before I connect the solar panel, I want to make sure I choose the right battery type so i'm going over here to parameter settings battery parameter tapping on that and then i am picking liquid because this is just a standard lead acid battery now it does say ensure that the solar module does not exceed oh protected from incident light i'm not entirely sure what that means but i think it means try and block the sunlight so i guess i'll throw the box that it came in on top for now then i'll connect the circuit breaker and then pull the box off i guess Turn and flip the switch and there we go the red blinking light means that the charge controller is now sending amps down to our auxiliary battery So it's been a little over a week since I installed this panel and it's been functioning perfect. It's done exactly what I hoped it would, which was to keep the battery topped off without having to charge the, or run the engine every once in a while. Um, also, if the van's gonna sit for a while, sometimes we don't use this van, you know, every week. And so I've gone and checked the voltages on the auxiliary battery after the van sits for a while and the van's maybe, you know, down on charge. Absolutely not a problem anymore with the solar panel naturally it's always getting a charge even on a cloudy day like this the, ch the charge controller is blinking away and putting some energy into not just the auxiliary battery but uh, my starting battery as well if you want to check out this stuff from new power the panel the new charge controller i'll put some links down below to their website they also sell on amazon but not everything on their website is available on amazon so check out the website too and you might find something that'll suit your project so hopefully you enjoyed this video, not just if you're looking for these particular panels, but e even if you're just looking to add solar to your own system in general. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. If you'd like to follow along with the rest of our adventures, make sure to subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos, click the notification bell as well.